Welcome to Pagan Crafting. I'm your host, Kara. Today, we're going to how to make your own spirit house for the spirits in your house. Maybe you have a servitor that needs a place to live. You may have some faith or just a nice place for your trolls or leprechauns or anybody that needs their own little place to chill out and feel amazing and have their own place to reside. Or maybe you like play D&D and you want to make some medieval houses. Join me today as we make these cute little medieval style spirit houses for the special little being in your life. I'm so excited to do this craft with you. Check out this little birdhouse. So cute. I got the one with the star, a flower, actually two stars and a circle. Each one's going to mean something different for me because I'm going to have a different being that's going to re reside in each spirit house. I'm making four of them total. We'll make one together today. After I sand off the little uh, bird per perch, I decided to sand around the edges everywhere too. As you can see, some of this $1.50 wood is peeling off. So I just, I don't want to pull anything off during my painting. So I'd rather just peel off what I can get off now. It's not going to make a difference. Up. We're going to do a lot of painting. Starting off with some cardboard, I have roughly... It's about a, a three, I think it's a two by two little square inch. I use the same length as the roof and I just scored it. Just scored it a little bit or you can take your scissors and just score a line straight through. Not that you're going all the way through, just enough to bend it so the cardboard crease is super cool. Now the type of cardboard I have used is you could use a cereal box is really good. Those of you that may have some drawing pads, some old paint pads, the back cardboard is so perfect for dioramas and crafts like this. Something about that cardboard, I wish they would just sell it as is. I'm using an industrial stapler, my friends, because I could not find my regular staple. I went back in my garbage, in my recycling, and I got out some cardboard of my dog treats and I'm just gonna cut little lines all the way through this is gonna be for our roof I saw this on a little dioramas that people have made nerd forge has done this way as well I've learned from them So one thing I did notice when they were gluing down all their little bits, after you've cut it off, cut, cut your pieces in length, and then you cut your little bits, staple down the first one, because I noticed that they did it and it had no foundation. Everyone was complaining that it was like the worst part of the job because it always slides, but I thought, what if you just staple it down? And behold, everything stayed in put and you can hide this staple too with all the other layers. I am using a mixture of Mod Podge glue here, making it nice and thick. I was running out of Mod Podge so I had some wood glue. You don't need wood glue at all and you don't need Mod Podge, just some thick white cra uh, like kids craft glue, some cheap glue. Coming up to the bend of the roof, I did add another staple there just to give it a little, again, a little bit of stability. I did uh, paint glue through the whole background, but I am painting over each layer to help give it that little extra oomph because I just don't want it to slide. So I really want the glue to stay thick. I like the higher peak of the roof and then it doesn't look like a birdhouse. It gives it a really neat look. I've sketched on lightly what I'd like to do. I didn't quite know how to break down the painting at first. So you know what? Let's, let's just sketch it on. It's a three layer house. It's got an attic. It's got the mid realm. And then I'll have a uh, stone at the bottom. Now this spirit house is helping out for my prosperity in my home and my abundance so i'm choosing the sage green 
I'm more of a natural, not natural color, that sounds weird, nature colors, earth tone colors kind of girl. And the spaces I'm leaving, I'm going to give it kind of the old world medieval style with the, the panels coming through. I'm just going to paint them black. It can be brown or black, whichever you'd like. It can be white. It can be any color. You can make it whimsical. Bring in sparkles. I really need to bring in more sparkles, but I never have the guts to do it. I'm just more of such a nature witch. I own a lot of sparkles. I tend to really get, I tend to go overboard once I get into the sparkle moment. And then I realize each time why I don't use sparkles that often because I'm, I'm an ADHD witch and I'm a messy witch. Ah! And I realize why I can't use sparkles each time. It takes me a while to remember this each time and I have to put it away and then how much I have sparkles that'll last me on my table for the next generation. Now I'm mixing up some grays. I'm going to use just a little freestyle gray. It doesn't need to be mixed properly because I would love a bit of that streakiness. So you don't need to have an absolute clean one color gray. It kind of turned out that way, but I really, to be honest, I really slopped it on. So I'm going to let that dry for a little bit. Bringing in the black, I'm going to just give a good solid brush down of black because I'm not going to dry brush just yet. So I'm going to dry brush a corresponding green for the roof. I have this kind of metallic sage that I love using. Now while the black is drying, while the roof is drying, I'm going to be bringing in some stones. Now you can draw on the stones first too, or you can just, just plop down some paint. Stones are not, I wound up using too big of a paintbrush. I can't get them too small. So I think here I switched. There we go, switched to another brush and then it was just a little easier. And again, you can see there's a, a slight color variation with some of the stones because I was I was just mixing it all willy nilly, and I find I get a better better look to that instead of trying to make it each color perfect, and then I I won't be able to make the stones perfect all the colors all the way around. It, so I'd rather just mix it up kind of haphazard. They look more like stones. Oh, see, I'm still, I'm rushing this. I still have the black that's, I, I get too excited. I just want to paint. And the black's still drying on the roof, so I, I got it all over my fingers now. Doing some smaller stones around the doorway and then bringing out medium size as I'm working my way around the edges and then the other three walls around the side and back, I do make the stones getting a little bit bigger. And just just doing some trash brushing for the front walkway and I use a bit of the dark over top of the light and kind of went back and forth a little bit and just worked it up to be honest I didn't feel like painting any more stones so I just like well trash brush the front looks cool looks like a whole bunch of little stones I'm liking it and if I didn't like it, I can paint over it medium and then I can bring in actual stones if I really thought it didn't look good once it dried. I probably would paint stones. Now we're going to put in our little wood paneling, our wood planks. And just use whatever cardboard you got in your recycling. You want something a little bit thicker? I find cereal boxes can be some of the best ones. Uh, what else is another good cracker box is a little bit thinner But some good cardboard to make dioramas and craft wood with those cereal boxes I'm 
just taking my time measuring this out i am not mathematical so those of you that are can probably figure out all these little dimensions super quickly and cut them all up but i cannot so i will just bring a pencil and cut one end at a time and hot glue this these puppies down a little bit by a little bit once I got into my second, third, and fourth spirit house, I went up a little bit faster. I was able to measure them a little bit quicker. So I made four of them total for this project that I'm working on. But we're, like I said, we're just going to do the one here. It's going to be repetitive. But what I've done, I've chosen a color for, to match up each of my spirits. So I do have the whimsical, the, pur uh, the purple, but that's kind of for my good luck and opportunities and have some just some all around good vibes around me. So I kind of like the vibe of the purple. Trust me, I really wanted to put sparkles on this, but another time, I don't know, I really like the medieval look, so I may not go sparkle sparkle with this. Now, red's my favorite color, so I also have a little red uh, spirit house, and that's going to be for my protection for the house. And again, red is something that is very special to me. It's a very powerful, magical, passionate color. So I find I, can, I utilize that color, and I have a lot of that color in my living area, because I really resonate with that color, and it, and it does. Like, it's like my superpower color. It's like I vibe up with that one. Now, next up, what I'm doing here, I'm just bringing in some black over the planks. And I'm going to paint probably, if I haven't done it yet, underneath the roof as I go along too. Now I enjoy the patterns because even the, I chose one house has a star for a window, one house kind of has a flower sun shape, another star, and the other one's a circle. And that was all the different patterns I could pick out uh, with the bird houses. So again, each star represents something different to my spirits. And I can't tell you about that because I don't want you to activate my spirits for me when I don't, when I'm not ready. So. We're not going to get to that part of the detail, but the colors that I've chosen, everything means something. Uh, where I have the doors on the house and the direction of the doors, I have them in front. Some of them are to the left, some of them to the right, and two of them are uh, centered, I believe. And that to me re is also has a meaning behind. And each of these little spirit houses will have an intention and a purpose for one of these spirit houses is for the actual house that I live in so that is uh, for the protection one of the houses is like I told you it's for my good luck and good opportunity the rest are for my servitors but uh, one house is for my my house spirit, my house overall. I just, I, I think I just needed a place to remind myself to give thanks and give offerings to the spirit of the house too, because sometimes we forget. And if we're having any issues in the house, the, the house spirit can definitely appease that. Or maybe that is what is upset if you're having even lights going out all the time light bulbs going out constantly things and toilets and whatnot you need to fix maybe your house spirit needs to be appeased maybe things are out of whack with that but back to our craft here now i've cut out little wood frames a little side bits out of some thicker cardboard i went back uh, to the cardboard that i used from one of my drawing pads it's a quite bit quite a bit thicker cardboard for the front and I just I put the house down on a piece of paper and traced out the roof and then just thickened it up drawn drew some circles at the bottom now I painted the one side black first and then I'm gonna glue down the black side facing towards the house that way if I when I go in to paint it I don't get anything on the green part because I'm really good at uh, 
making messes. So this way I can just glue it all on, paint the remaining front super quick like I'm doing right now, and the back, and I don't get anything on the green, and I find it a, just a way to break down a little easier. Now I have a little mixture here of green, it's kind of like an olive green and a little bit of metallic green together. Doing some dry brushing, pulling up the paint first on top of the little wood shingles if you will. I think that's what they'd be called. And it's best to do a little bit at a time. Because you can always bring up the dry layers versus if you blob on a little bit too quick. I've done that before too. And then you have to try to backpedal or you have to paint it all black again and then hit it again. Which is not a problem, but it just takes extra time. And it's good too to try to, I went the opposite way and then you get the too much color. So it's try to get the color going one way all the time with your brush. There we be. Now that you've designed your spirit house and you've gotten all painted and put together, may I suggest that you also design a sigil and paint it on the bottom or you can paint it on the back of the house for each of your beings that reside or for the spirit of the house or for the fae or for your servitor. Let them feel special, especially when you're feeding them however you energetically or physically choose to. Thank you so very much for joining me today and have yourself an absolutely magical day.